Hello, this is Bruce with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to show you a solution Chris Yates came up with on granting view definition permissions to all stored procedures in a Microsoft SQL Server database. Chris agreed to let us create this video showing his solution, which is available as an article on his blog at the URL shown here. Chris's solution is based on a SQL script that's designed to grant view definition permissions to all stored procedures in a particular database based on a user that is added into the script. To demonstrate Chris's solution, I'm going to go ahead and type the script in my query window and I'm going to run it against the Northwind database and the idea is I'm going to assign a user, Homer, the view definition permission on all the stored procedures within the Northwind database. So I'm going to go ahead and type the script and then I'll go back through and explain the important parts of the script before I run it. That's it for the script. Now I'm going to scroll back up and go over the important pieces of the script before we actually try running it. So we can see at the top of the script we've got this statement that's declaring that at perm table. The at perm table is a variable, table variable, and we're defining it with a identity column. And then we've got a sysname column that we're storing uh, just name information into it. It's going to be the stored procedure names. After that, we've got some variable declarations. We're going to use the row count to loop through as we look at all the stored procedure names. And then the record count we're going to use to compare against it so that we can break out of the loop. The next part of the script, we're inserting data into the perm table. And where we're getting this data from is from this view, this information schema routines view, we're retrieving back two columns. We're retrieving back the routine schema, concatenating a period to it, and then a the routine name. What this will give us is the full name of the stored procedure. Actually, this, uh, this view would bring back stored procedures and functions, but here we're filtering it with this word procedure, so it's only going to bring back the procedure names, uh, stored procedures, and not the, not the functions. It'll omit the functions. Additionally, based on Chris's blog, if we want to filter on or we want to filter out any stored procedures that begin with a certain prefix, in this case coming from his blog, I got this DT underscore, that's also going to be removed so the user won't get the permissions to any stored procedures that begin with DT underscore. In my case, the Northwind database doesn't have any stored procedures that begin with DT underscore, so it could safely be omitted, but it doesn't hurt to have it in there. I could always change it to any prefix that I wanted to filter out. I can run this query just to see what uh, we get back. I'm just going to run the select part of the query. And I can see from the Northwinds database that I've got 14 rows being returned back from my query. I can see my I can see 10 of the 14 rows and each one of these is just the full name of a stored procedure. I can scroll down through the results can see all 14 of them. So I know I'm getting back again the names of the stored procedures that I ultimately want to assign permissions to. Working our way down through the script, I'm using this select count and storing in a record count variable. And this I'm just going to use to compare my while loop, which we can see below here, where we've got a while. The record count, I'm incrementing it automatically by one. Uh, in, the first, in the first comparison, and then I've got a row count, which I'm starting at a value of 1, and then down at the end of my statement, I'm incrementing that row count, which of course is coming back from the count statement in my table variable, perm table. So when I get to the end of the records, that should set the value, and I should be able to break out of the while loop. What's actually performing the permission assignment is this SQL string, we're using this grant view definition on the name 
there's the name of my store procedure. Now I'm using a trim function to trim off any tailing characters that come in it. And then I'm assigning it to a user. In this case, uh, I actually typed in Bubba, but I need to change that to the user I've got in the Northwind database. It currently does have any, doesn't have any permissions, is Homer. So I'm going to be granting Homer permissions. And again, I'll be granting him the view definition. And as I loop through, this part will change out to each name of my store procedure in my Northwind database. And finally, to show at the end, we've got this select all from the at perm table variable, and we'll be able to see all the names of the store procedures that we've granted permissions to. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Hopefully it'll execute successfully. I can see from my message window that I've got a problem with some of the store procedure names. And these are store procedures that have spaces in their names. So 14 of the rows that didn't have spaces worked fine, but some of the store procedures again had spaces in the Northwind database, and those are causing problems. So I need to modify this code a little bit, make it a little bit more resilient. So up here where I'm creating the store procedure, the name of the store procedure that includes the schema and the routine name, I'm going to go ahead and concatenate or add a left square bracket after the period, and then I'll add a right square bracket. And let's try running this again. And that time we got all the store procedures included in our permission assignment and also included in our results. We didn't get any error messages. We can verify that Homer has permissions to these store procedures. If I go over here to my object explorer, I've already got the Northwind database expanded. I've got the security group expanded, the users expanded, and I'll choose Homer, right click on Homer, and then I'll select the properties from the menu. And this shows all of the objects that he currently has permissions to, which are really just those 14 store procedures. As I select through them, I can see that sure enough, he's got the view definition permission down here that's been assigned to him, and that was a result of the script. In summary, this script can be handy if you need to assign review definition permissions, or really any permissions, to an individual user to all the stored procedures within a particular database. That's it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it.